The Cuban Revolution was an armed uprising led by Fidel Castro and other revolutionaries against the Fulgencio Batista military government. On July 26, 1953, a failed attack on military barracks in Cuba signaled the start of the uprising. By the end of 1958, Castro's 26th of July movement guerrilla revolutionaries had taken control of Cuba, forcing Batista to abandon the country on the 1st of January, 1959. Over the following two decades, a number of presidents came and went, but Batista remained a constant. He sought a second term in 1952, after serving as president from 1940 to 1944. As a result of his setback, he staged a bloodless coup and ousted the government, calling off the elections. The 26th of July movement was started by the rebels after they were imprisoned. The M26-7 rebels planned an invasion of Cuba from Mexico on the boat Granma after receiving amnesty. By the time the rebels overthrew Batista, the Popular Socialist Party, the 26th of July movement, and the Directorio Revolucionario Estudiantil were leading the revolution. This still leaves us with many questions. What led the revolution and how was it carried out? To what extent did the Cuban Revolution emerge from social and political conditions on the island? And to what extent was it a singular creation of Fidel Castro? What are the principal achievements of the Cuban Revolution? And what are its most significant failures? Would Cuba be better off today if there had never been a revolution? And lastly, what was the American intervention during the Cuban Revolution? In today's video, we are going to look into the Cuban Revolution, what led to the revolution, and how was it carried out. Let's dive right in. Batista's Regime Who is Fulgencio Batista, and why was he overthrown? In 1952, Fulgencio Batista, a former soldier who had previously led Cuba as its elected president from 1940 to 1944, took office again after a military coup and the annulment of the elections. Batista had been somewhat progressive during his first tenure, but by the 1950s, he had become much more autocratic and unconcerned with the needs of the people. Batista enraged the populace by establishing lucrative connections to organized crime and allowing American companies to dominate the Cuban economy particularly sugarcane plantations and other local resources, while Cuba continued to be plagued by high unemployment and inadequate water infrastructure. Although the U.S. provided political and military backing to the Batista regime, U.S. President John F. Kennedy later acknowledged its corruption and the need to overthrow it. The original Communist Party of Cuba, later known as the Popular Socialist Party, which supported Batista during his first time as president, opposed him during his second term. Batista created a fairly flimsy security bridge to intimidate political rivals. Fidel Castro, a young lawyer and activist at the time, petitioned for Batista's removal from power. In the months that followed the March 1952 revolution, accused him of oppression and corruption. Castro's constitutional defenses, though, were dismissed by Cuban courts. Castro decided to start an armed revolution after concluding that there was no legitimate way to overthrow the Cuban government. The Cuba Revolution How did it start? Before Batista's ascension to power, Castro, a young lawyer and activist, was running for Congress on behalf of the Cuban People's Party. In 1952, Fidel Castro and his brother Raul established a group known as the Movement. It had well over a thousand members and a stockpile of weapons by the end of the year. The Movement attacked the Moncada barracks in Santiago de Cuba on July 26, 1953. Nearly all of the 160 or so rebels who took part in the assault were either murdered or taken prisoner. Castro's second-in-command, Abel Santamara, who was captured, tortured, and killed the same day as the raid was one of the victims. Only 20 insurgents, including Fidel and Raul Castro, 
managed to flee into the adjacent Sierra Maestra Mountains. The Castros were captured though, and President Batista was able to quickly pick up the fugitives. Fidel Castro spoke for several hours during his trial to defend his activities and denounce Batista. He ended by saying, history will clear my name. Raul received a 13-year sentence, while Fidel received a 15-year term in the Presidio Modelo Jail on the island of Piños. Make sure to subscribe to History Flicks and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any of our future history updates. Batista is elected president. Batista was officially elected president in 1954 without facing any challenge. Despite how he had seized power, the United States recognized Batista's government. Castro's allies had pushed for his release as part of the amnesty for political prisoners during the election. Now that Batista believed his position was secure and he had nothing to fear from the Castro movement, he consented to the release of the Castro brothers and numerous other political prisoners. After being released from prison in May 1955, Fidel and Raul Castro discovered that Batista's government had curtailed their freedoms in Cuba. The brothers, along with several other revolutionaries, fled the nation for Mexico out of fear that they would be detained once more. The Castro brothers received instruction from Alberto Bayo, a commander of Republican forces in the Spanish Civil War, and soon united with other exiles in Mexico to get ready to overthrow Batista. Ernesto Che Guevara, an Argentine revolutionary who sided with Fidel, was introduced to him in June 1955. Ernesto, the principal advisor to Raul and Fidel, helped to start Batista's amnesty. The 26th of July movement was the nickname given to the revolutionaries in honor of the day they attacked the Moncada barracks in 1953. Members depart to Mexico. 82 members of the 26th of July movement departed to Mexico on the yacht Grandma on November 25, 1956. On December 2nd, the boat arrived at Playa Las Coloradas in southwest Cuba, and the rebels promptly left for the Sierra Maestra Highlands, where they could launch a guerrilla operation in relative safety. However, Batista's men attacked them, greatly reducing their numbers and only around 25% of the initial invading force survived. Che Guevara, Camilo Cienfuegos, and both the Castro brothers were among the survivors. The rebels then began a phase of attacking nearby army outposts and gathering fresh followers for their cause. Different revolutionary cells were engaged in anti-government operations in other parts of Cuba. The Revolutionary Directorate a large student organization attempted to assassinate Batista on March 13, 1957, by storming the presidential palace in Havana. The attack was unsuccessful, and the government took horrible action in retaliation. U.S. backing for Batista's administration began to wane as it became increasingly oppressive. To spread the word about the legitimacy of his cause and garner support from far outside the borders of Cuba, Castro was inviting journalists and video crews to his mountain retreats. Foreigners started sending money and supplies to Castro, and some even came to Cuba to fight Batista. One such foreign fighter was the American William Morgan, who rose to the rank of Comandante in a rebel group fighting in the central Cuban Escambray Mountains. Batista Attacks Castro Batista started to feel the strain in 1958. He was having trouble arming his forces since the U.S. had ceased supplying him with weapons. He launched Operation Verano in the summer to finally put Castro out of his misery. Castro's stronghold in Sierra Maestra was besieged by government troops. Batista's forces massively outnumbered the rebels because he had overestimated the number of them. Castro's troops, however, were by that point skilled guerrilla warriors who were quite familiar with the surrounding area. They have networks of locals who might give them information on the whereabouts and strategies of the army. The Battle of La Plata was started on July 11, 1958, when government forces entered the mountains from the Southern Sea and moved towards Castro's position. However, Castro was prepared for them 
and ambushed the soldiers en route, blocking their escape. The unit commander resisted Castro's demands for many days before finally backing down on July 21st. General Cantillo, the army's commander, made a strategic decision to tactically withdraw another battalion in the hopes that the rebels would once more set up an ambush to attempt to entice Castro to leave. This time, additional government troops were prepared and ready to assault the rebels unexpectedly. The Battle of Las Mercedes, which started on July 29, 1958, saw the army triumph over Castro's insurgents. Castro requested a truce out of fear that his forces would be destroyed, but as talks continued, his soldiers started to retreat into the highlands. General Cantillo planned to begin hostilities on August 8th, when the negotiations were through, but discovered his foes had disappeared. Batista's strategy was a failure because Castro was still at large and army morale was at an all-time low. Castro Attacks Castro started his attack on August 21st, 1958. He started moving northward as he emerged from the mountains, dividing his army into three columns led by Jaime Vega, Che Guevara, and Camilo Cienfuegos. Batista's forces stopped Vega's column, but the other two reached central Cuba and joined up with other rebel organizations. Cienfuegos attacked the army outpost at Yawahai from December 19th through December 30th, 1958. Cienfuegos was lauded as the hero of Yawahai after the garrison eventually capitulated due to a lack of ammunition. Che Guevara, who arrived in Santa Clara on December 28th, was approaching during this time. Batista gave the order to send an armored train with essential supplies and weaponry to the town. Guevara used a bulldozer to bend the railroad track during the battle for Santa Clara, leading to the derailment and capture of the government train. Batista leaves Cuba. On January 1, 1959, Batista realized that his time in power in Cuba was up, and he left the island. Guevara and Cienfuegos entered Havana unimpeded on January 3rd. On January 8th, when Fidel Castro arrived, the Cuban Revolution was over. Castro would exercise communist tyranny for many years. He first denied being a communist, although this may have been done to make him seem less extreme to his admirers around the world including those in the United States. Castro's Revolution Triumphs The Castro brothers quickly established their dominance, eliminating any traces of the Batista regime and any competing rebel organizations that had assisted them in their ascent to power. To find war criminals from the Batista era who had committed murder and torture during the previous dictatorship and bring them to trial and execution. Raul Castro and Che Guevara were tasked with organizing teams. Castro started as a nationalist, but he soon changed to communism and actively courted the Soviet authorities. Communist Cuba would be an annoyance to the United States for many years, contributing to the international disasters like the Bay of Pigs and the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Cuban people endured years of hardship as a result of the 1962 trade embargo that the United States enforced. Castro's leadership saw Cuba become a major player on the world stage. The most well-known instance is when Cuba intervened in Angola in the 1970s, sending thousands of troops to support a socialist revolution. All around Latin America, idealistic young people picked up guns to destroy hated governments and install new ones as a result of the Cuban Revolution. The Nicaraguan government was finally overthrown and replaced by Sandinista insurgents. Due to the advent of Marxist revolutionary groups like Chile's MIR and Uruguay's Tupamaros, right-wing military regimes took power in the southern part of South America. Chilean dictator Augusto Pinochet as a prime example. These oppressive governments banded together through Operation Condor to launch a terror campaign against their people. Although the Marxist uprisings were suppressed, many innocent people died as a result. On the other hand, 
tensions between Cuba and the United States persisted well into the 21st century. The ethnic makeup of Miami and South Florida has changed over time as a result of waves of migrants leaving the island country. In what became known as the Mariel Boat Lift, more than 125,000 Cubans escaped the island nation in homemade boats in 1980 alone. So there you have it, everything you need to know about the Cuban Revolution. If you like this, subscribe to History Flicks and explore more history and mystery with us. Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to let us know what you would like to see on History Flicks and what you think about this video in the comments section. If you like this video, check out the other videos on History Flicks. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.